Hi, fourth graders. It's Mr. Dinsmore here with another webcast. This is showing you how to do a partial products division method using circles to, as a visual. If you notice, I have 7 divided into 326 or 326 divided by 7, depending on how you're writing it. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this 326 and break it into 7 parts. And once we know what one of those parts is, then we'll know our answer. So let's get started by drawing three circles here, three more, and then one to make seven. So draw out seven circles, and those are our seven parts that 326 will be split into. Now let's look at the place value here. I, I could count 326, putting one in each circle, all the way to 326, but it would be very difficult. Um, I'd probably lose count, and it is not a very efficient method for doing division, and you probably hate division the rest of your life. That's why we're going to look at breaking um, the numbers in larger chunks. So by looking at 300, because I have three hundreds in, um, in this number, I now can get rid of the 300, whittle my number down, and see how it breaks up in a more efficient way. Well, what do I do with this 300? How do I break it among these seven? Well, what I like to do is I like to start with larger numbers besides one, obviously, and putting it in each circle. So a number like um, 100 would give me 700 total, but that's larger than 300. So I can't jump to 100 and go that way. So obviously that's way out of the range. Well, let's go with 50. If I put 50 in each circle, and then um, I could easily eliminate 326, but if I go 50 times 7, the problem is, is it's larger than 326, so I can't do that. If I'm putting um, a 50 in each circle, my number then will be larger than the original number, and I have to stay, i got to get exactly 326, so we need to find an easier number to work with. Well, 50 was close, so why not 40? 40 times 7 is 280. That will eliminate a good portion of 326. It's And almost get rid of my entire 300 that I'm looking at originally here. So let's do that. Let's put 40 in each circle. And you can see this is much easier than putting 40 hash marks. Because now I've taken... If I take... 40 and put it in seven circles, that gets me 280. The nice thing is, is now I can subtract that from the original number, and all I have left is 46. So once I divide 46 among the circles, I'll have the answer. So 46, how would I break it among these seven circles? Hmm. Well, if I know my math facts, I can figure this out quite easily. I could say, 7 times 6 is 42. That would work. One thing my math facts does tell me is I'm going to have a remainder because I don't know a math fact um, with 7 that would get me to 46. 7 times 6 gets me 42, and 7 times 7 is 49, so I can't use that. Well, I must stay below the number that I'm um, breaking apart. So 42 is a safe bet. Well, to get 42 and I times 7 by 6, so let's put that 6 in every circle. And you can see that I'm going to have still a remainder of 4. So let me show you how I got that remainder of 4. Well, 42 would get me um, my 7 6s, so 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46. Gives me those hash marks. So that shows me that I have a remainder of 4. Well, I can also subtract my 42 from my 46, and it shows I have a remainder of 4. I've, now I have my answer. And you can see that, yes, there is a remainder 4. But to find the answer, all I need to do is look at one of the circles. Because that tells me what I'm going to have for one of those parts of 7. Um, and if I add them up, I get 46 with a remainder of 4. However, we've been learning how to write a remainder properly. Instead of putting a remainder 4, we're looking at what we divided the number by, 
and we're going to write our remainder as a fraction. So yes, we have four, but we were dividing it in seven groups, so I just put that seven. And now I have, for my denominator, and now I have my fraction. So my answer is 46 and 4 sevenths. Um, and once again, you can see I marked off the circles because I literally have seven circles. That shows that's why my denominator is also seven. The answer is 46 and 4 sevenths. I hope this was helpful and is a good visual of partial products division. Um, our next step will be partial products division, and then finally we'll get into the traditional long division method so you understand what's happening. The nice thing, as you start understanding the process division, you'll be able to start to being able to do a lot of division in your head based on this partial products uh, method. I hope it works out and enjoy.